Tom McMullen covers the Eagles and the NFL for 97.3 ESPN. Dot com And, John, it seemed like it was going to be an honest day. You know, we'd have a little fun maybe talking about the rookies, although one rookie we will talk about here in just a minute. And then we got Tom Condon. Uh. They gave him another platform to speak, John. Why? Why did Sam Bradford's <laughs> agent speak again? Why? Well, he's got to jump on the sword, as I read it at 973ESPN.com. That's his job, and he does it very good. He already uh, did jump on the sword. He didn't need to do it again. It was over. This story had advanced. It had moved on. We were all peachy keen. It was going to be a happy time. Why? Why did he speak again? Well, I don't, I don't know if it, we're all peachy keen. I, I think his teammates are fine with it. I, I don't think they care at all, to be honest. Uh, I think this is more about spitting it uh, to the general public. And until Sam Bradford gets past Tuesday uh, and, and meets the media, uh, it's not going to be over. I think it will be over at that point. But they want to set it up. And what they're setting up is the you see it time and time again. The buzzword is business decision. And, and it was a business move. And it was just business. And that's what they're going to do. And that's they're, they're pounding it home like a politician. It's a talking point. And they want to get it across. And the best way to get it across to the, to the casual fans is to hit it and hit it again and hit it again. And that's what they're doing. I was going to say, why didn't Tom Condon just let it get to Tuesday? Why didn't he just let this thing blow over for a couple more days, tell his client what to say, and then, you know, move on? I mean, it, it seemed like, again, that he put more gasoline on the fire today. Well, I, I don't think Tom thinks his client is Bill Clinton and can handle that kind of pressure and be able to do uh, and hit the talking point. So I think he feels it's his job to protect him as best he can, whether he's been successful or not. I, I don't think so. You don't think so. Most people probably don't think so. But while I say that, that's because the point is basically indefensible, yet he's done uh, you know, a pretty good job trying to at least spin it to where you can say, oh, I, I believe that at least a little bit. So I, I think he's done the best he can do with what he was given. And, and that's the fact that uh, he wanted out. He wanted to get in Denver. And, and, you know, people don't talk about the other side of this. And that's the fact that Howie Roseman asked for two second round picks for Sam Bradford and that salary, which is flat out insanity uh and and i think if this goes in a negative direction all of a sudden you have to look at howie roseman and say look man just take a fourth or fifth round pick and move on and get out of this situation well asking so, for two asking for two second rounders does that indicate what they have uh maintained all along that they did not intend and did not want to trade sam well, it intends the fact that I, I don't know if they, they didn't want to trade him because they certainly would have traded them. I, I think he's trying to hoodwink John Elway, and let's look at the reputations of those two. And I, I don't like Howie's chances in that fight, so to speak. So to me, if you weren't going to trade him, and I believe, say, if Denver came back and said, all right, We'll give you a third-round pick. I think Sam Bradford would be in Denver, to be perfectly honest. So I think that was Howie's starting point, and it was a big, big overreach. Uh, a couple things. Now, I listened to both the Rich Eisen interview and the Stephen A. Smith interview. I thought Stephen A. did a, 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 did a better job. Um, he, he, he went at Tom, right? I mean, he, he went out with – and he asked questions that I wanted to hear – Three things stood out to me, John. I'll go one by one and get your reaction. One, Condon said that he advised Bradford to take this position, that he was not told by his client to that this was what he wanted to do. He said, I'm the agent. He's the player. I told him to do this. Well, he is the agent, and Sam is the player. And what does that mean? That means Tom is Sam's employee. So, uh, in a lot of ways, if that's true, and I don't believe it is, I, I think that's another example of Tom just trying to jump on the sword. Uh, if it were true, in some ways it's even worse because you're a grown man. You take control of your own situation. You tell your agent what you want. Uh, he can give you advice, but it's your decision. 
So uh, in a lot of ways, I, I would hold that against Sam if I believed it, but I don't believe it. I just think it was Tom trying to, to do his best uh, to shield Sam Bradford, a guy who's made him a lot of money over the years. Well, and a lot of times, though, people don't have that personality where they can tell somebody else, this is what I want, go do it for me. They assume that that's your job, and I'm just going to listen. You're advising me, right? I mean, isn't that fair to say some people are yeah, a little I mean, passive-aggressive? Some, some are, and again, I, I, you know, I, I questionably, but I, I, at that point, you, you blame it on the other person. I mean, yes, uh, uh Again, it, Tom, that might have been Tom's advice, and and the fact that Denver's a better situation. And by the way, that's good advice because the Broncos are a heck of a lot of better, better situation for not only Sam Bradford but just about any player than the Philadelphia Eagles. So if you can spin that off, and you could somehow get Sam in Denver, well, yeah, I, I, I'm sure he would have signed off on that, but. If Sam is intent on saying, eh, you know what, I, I don't want to keep moving on. You've mentioned that a lot, Mike, and he has said it in the past. Uh, he's, he's had a lot of different offensive coordinators. Uh, maybe he wants to stay in, in one city, uh, even though it's another new coaching staff, Whatever, however you want to spin it. But then you say to him, you know what, I don't want to do that, and, and I'm just going to show up and go to work, and we'll see what happens next year. But – he didn't do that. So, uh, you know, i got to hold the gra- a grown man responsible for his own decisions, and that's the bottom line. Whether your, your agent is passive-aggressive or not, it's your decision. John, you mentioned moving on. Are you surprised by the fact that he wants to be long-term with reports that, you know, he, he may or may not like it here? Mike and I talked about that. Does Sam, Sam actually like it here, and then yet he also wants a long-term deal? You can't have your cake and eat it, too. Yeah, I mean, he's never he's never come out and said, I, I don't like it here. He's intimated it in the past, and we've heard, I've heard from a couple of different sources that he doesn't enjoy the area all that much, and he's an Oklahoma kid, and it might be understandable. So that's where that stuff comes from. Uh, but, yeah, you're right, uh, Pete. It's kind of, you can't have it both ways. You can't say, I don't like it here, and then say, I want to be here long term. But, the whole long-term philosophy is laughable to begin with because Sam Bradford's not going to get that deal anywhere, whether it's Philadelphia, Denver, New York with the Jets, Cleveland, you name it. Teams aren't that obtuse to give a guy with his track record a long-term contract. So that was never going to happen no matter where he ended up. And in your article, it sounds like you have an idea of what you think Bradford's going to say on Tuesday when he talks. In other words, that that Condon has picked his role to then give Bradford the, I think you used the words, plausible deniability. Yeah, and that's the business decision aspect. You heard it in Sam's statement, which was obviously written for him by Tom Condon. You hear it in every uh, interview Tom's doing, Rich Eisen, uh, Stephen A. Smith. It's a business decision. That's all it is. Now we move forward. Uh, we couldn't get done what we wanted. So if anything, uh, he's been above board uh, about the end game, and the end game was obviously the Broncos, and they couldn't swing it. And and now the only option is to come back and make the best of a, a bad situation. And you're going to hear that term, business decision, an awful lot over the next few days. Yeah, so what do you hear more when Sam does talk? Business decision or I let Tom handle that or that, that's Tom's job? Or I, I, you know, how, how does that break down? Well, I, I think that Tuesday is when Sam presumably is going to speak. I can't imagine the Eagles would hold him back uh, from the media access. And he's going to have to deal I never with let, it. I would never let him talk, talk again. <laughs> no. I know. They would like to. <laughs> But what you do is you just take your medicine, you get through it, you say business isn't. From this point forward, I want to talk about football. That's the way I think he's going to spin it. Okay. And for the most part, I think it'll work because we are. It is very early. It's still May. Uh, we got a long way to training camp, never mind regular season. So, uh, And knowing the Eagles, there's always something that pops up. And, and the next crisis is going to be right around the corner, and that's going to be Sam Bradford's uh, friend. John, uh, I, I mentioned earlier there was a couple things that stood out in that Condon interview. We mentioned the first one. The second thing to me that stood out was 
Tom Condon said there was never any discussion from the Eagles about taking a quarterback. Howie Roseman said we were up front about selecting a quarterback. Who do you believe? Uh, I believe the Eagles in that instance. Uh, and, and as I said before, it, it doesn't even matter if the he said, he said, she said aspect of it because at the end of the day, Tom has enough, enough experience to realize what the landscape is. And even if Howie lied right to his face, he understood uh, that it was a possibility. The only difference is where the quarterback came and the fact that I don't think Sam would have had an issue if the quarterback came in the second or third round. In fact, I know he would not. He probably wouldn't have even had an issue if it came at number 13 overall. But uh, the the realization of, of a number two overall pick and a guy you gave up five draft choices for and spun off three players to get up there means – you have no chance if you're Sam Bradford to be uh, to seize this position no matter what you do. He realizes that. That part of it's fair to say from their camp. Uh, but uh, as I've also pointed out, he's not the first to go through that. And you still have to show up to work and you still have to do it the best way you can, if only for yourself, uh, to continue your career, whether it's next year or two years in another city. I agree with a lot of that, too. I, I don't think he would care if they took a guy at 13. I don't think he would care if they took a guy. They couldn't take a guy in the second round. They didn't have a pick. But third round, fourth, whatever, which goes back to the people that criticize him that he doesn't want to compete. I don't really think that's the, 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 the operative thing here. It's not that he doesn't want to compete. He wants to be able to compete fairly. And regardless of his play on the field, the time is ticking for him. But that being said, there's been a lot of people who have also criticized him because he ended up with a two-year deal. And they people have said, well, he turned down the long-term deal. This is on him. No, and not. Tom no, Condon said not. today on the rumors that he was offered a long-term deal, he said, no, they did not. I don't know where that came from. Yeah, I, I, I talk- Hundred percent. I, I reported that since back when it first leaked out. Think about the environment that was. Chip Kelly was still the head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles. There is no way in this world that Chip Kelly is given a long-term extension to Sam Bradford. That was nonsense from day one, from step one. It was never offered. Certainly the numbers that the, were being thrown around. Uh, none of that. Would the Eagles have liked a, a, an extension for a team-friendly aspect? Yeah, I'm sure they would have, uh, but that was it, and that was the extent of it. The, the, the long-term four- or five-year deals at significant money, uh, I don't have a lot of respect for Chip Kelly and the way he handled personnel for this team, and even I wouldn't uh, say that he would do that. That, that would just be insanity from a personnel person standpoint, and there's no way that was even on the table. So, John, let's talk about the Carson Wentz deal today that's announced today. Uh, big money, more money than Bradford, certainly big signing bonus money. Does that further push the issue then for Bradford? Hey, the clock's ticking. No, I mean, the rookie contracts are slotted now, and that's why you don't see holdouts, and it's very easy. So uh, with the new CBA, everything is you're, you're slotted in your position, and that's that's where he is. Twenty seven million basically for four years, and, and seventeen, uh, almost eighteen million guaranteed. Actually, Sam gets more than that. He's going to get twenty two million guaranteed this year. So uh, that's the one thing the Eagles love about taking a quarterback is uh, even a first rounder. That's very very. Uh, Team friendly for five years at that particular position, uh, that salary. So if Carson Wentz is a success and turns into a star by say year two or year three, all of a sudden that gives you a lot of space uh, to build your roster, and that's the the best way to do it in the NFL is to get a very uh, young quarterback who's still under that rookie deal uh, and still has a lower salary because. You can really build up a great roster if you do hit that way. Yeah, one thing's interesting um, with the Wentz deal. As he mentioned, uh, Pete said he got uh, seventeen point six million in guaranteed money. Uh, that's a lot of money. His 
yearly salary on average isn't all that much, which I guess gives him the opportunity to be a little patient with him uh, because he's not making a whole heck of a lot of salaried money. But, you know, the fact of the matter, John, is they got a lot of money tied up in one position. And I think Howie Roseman has said in the past, you can't have that much money tied into one position and expect to be successful. No, it, it's, you know, this was not the original plan, obviously. And, and they have, and, and I wrote about it today, they have, I think, $13 million more tied up in the quarterback position than any other team. Baltimore would be second. So uh, that's how much money the Eagles have tied up at the quarterback this year. And what does that mean? In the short term, it means the exact opposite of just what I was explaining with Carson Wentz. It means the back end of your roster isn't as good because you're wasting a lot of money at the quarterback position. Now, saying that, it's very short term. Uh, they'll likely move on from Sam after this year, uh, probably 95% chance, and all of a sudden that'll be back into a much more manageable situation uh, and even more than manageable because Carson doesn't make a lot of money uh, for a starting quarterback in the NFL, uh, and that will turn around. But certainly in the short term for 2016, that is a lot of money to tie up in one position, and it's going to hurt you at other aspects. And that's one of the reasons this plan uh, of sort of trying to compete while at the same time rebuilding might blow up a little bit on Howie Roseman. All right, John McMullen, 97.3 ESPN.com. Uh, the fallout from the San Bradford situation continues because Tom Condon won't let it go away. Uh, he spoke not once but twice. Uh, so there's plenty more on that at 973ESPN.com. And, uh, of course, Carson Wentz signs his rookie deal today. And uh, John has more on the numbers at 973ESPN.com. You know, I find it interesting, too, that there are people out there uh, I know Ryan Clark today, one of them over at ESPN, who is either still a player or just recently removed. Is he still playing, Clark? Is he just yeah, recently removed? Recently. Okay. Yeah. That, you know, tell, basically coming out, calling him a crybaby, you know, get out there. You know, I, I find it interesting that it seems like retired players are kind of going after him, and then players who are still active are more like, hey, it's the business side of things. It's almost like the retired players, once they're out of the business, are like, we hated this yeah, they, business. They, they, once they're out of the business, they start thinking logically. Bart Scott did the same thing to Ryan Fitzpatrick yesterday. Did the same exact thing. Destroyed him. Say, and if he were still a player, he'd be saying the exact opposite. He's saying <laughs> Ryan's got to try to get what he can get. And then all of a sudden, you're, not, you're, you're out of the game, you're in the media, and you start looking at things a little more logically, uh, and your opinion changes. And that's that's just the reality of the situation. But, I, you know, I, I don't have – I really don't have a problem with what Sam Bradford did. I, 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 look, if, if you're in his position and you can get to Denver and quarterback the reigning Super Bowl champions, why wouldn't you want to do that instead of being a one-year bridge to Carson Wentz? Uh, from a logical standpoint, that has to be your decision. If somebody lays out those two scenarios in front of you, every single human being is going to pick the Denver Broncos. And that's, that's why I can't really hold it against him. I, I, and it didn't work, and now he's got to come back to, and he's got to take his medicine, as I said, and he'll do that. he will try to move forward. But I, I think from a human perspective, it was very understandable what he did. Uh, we have voluntary starting Tuesday, rookies in on Friday, and John will have plenty more on all of that at 973ESPN.com. You can always get John's national take at todayspigskin.com and follow him on Twitter. And by the way, real real quick, guys, Everett Golston's going to be in town in the tryout camp. So we got another quarterback to talk about. He would have been a nice fit for, for Chip Kelly, Kelly, right? He would have been a nice fit he in the Kelly system. He would have been. He, he's a little undersized. I obviously, had a great run at Notre Dame. Then he played at Florida State last year as a graduate transfer. But uh, I just think it's interesting. You have you have Sam, you have Chase Daniel, you have Carson Wentz, you have McLeod Bethel Thompson, who nobody talks about. Now we got Everett Golson in for for the weekend. Follow John at J F McMullen 
on Twitter. And uh, we'll talk to John on tomorrow's show. Thanks. I hope Tom Condon speaks again tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> he probably will. But Carson Wentz will. We'll, be, we'll all be there at 1230. Cool. All right. We'll talk to you then. Thanks, guys.